on this beautiful, beautiful morning, finds us at the Drumcliff Village along the Drumcliff River. And just above us here is Columba Church. And just in a few minutes, we'll be visiting the gravesite of W.B. Yates. But this river helps get us in a mood, I guess, for our visit, kind of a pilgrimage to Yates's grave. To admit over the years, I've tried to read a bit of Yeats and found it a challenge. Um, maybe I'm just not at the right time of my life, but it just isn't calling to me yet at this time. But on this site is a monastery. And the monastery is kind of broken up, so I won't be walking all the way through it. The main highway of the area, the N17, moves right through the middle of the monastery. So we know it's a monastery because of the remains of the round tower you'll see in a few minutes. Um, but I thought I would start by this little river. And Yates was inspired by the countryside that's all around us. And specifically a mountain, which we'll see here in a few minutes. That was just the, the inspiration for Mr. Yates. Again, and the cars are roaring by here, but there's a little round tower with this defensive door high above the ground. It's across a busy highway here, and it was part of the monastic settlement here about a thousand years ago. So these symbols of medieval Ireland once dotted the countryside. I hear a little while, a little bit back from the highway and St. Columbus, which we'll visit here in a second is this classic high cross. Now, the cross that was once colorfully painted is carved with reliefs to pick, designed to help teach people Bible lessons. So on this, I'd turn to the other side where the sun hits a little bit of a better angle, we can find reliefs of Adam and Eve and Cain and Clubby and Abel and Christ in majesty on one side and a camel trying to get through the eye of the needle. There's the camel on the other side. Now this is a historic spot. I mean, this is the site of a monastery founded in AD 574 by St. Columba. He and his other saints had a quarrel over the rights to a book, which actually led to a battle here in which about 3,000 people were killed. Columba was so distraught by the bloodshed that he eventually banished himself from Ireland and he sailed to Iona in Scotland, where he founded another monastery famous as the original home of the magnificent book that we saw in our first days here in Ireland, the Book of Kells back in Dublin. So again, we just came up from the path where it gives us dramatic views of Ben Bulben, which is the mountain behind the trees here. Um, which was certainly an inspiration to Yates. Here is St. Columba Church a little closer. This is the parish church for the village. Quite a cute little church on the inside, which we'll see in a moment. And here's the inside of the beautiful little church. Very peaceful. And here finally is the gravesite itself of W.B. Yates and his wife, George. And the tombstone has this interesting epitaph, cast a cold eye on life, on death, horseman passes by. But it is here very close to the church, just a couple of steps away from the church, and very simple. 
very, very simple. And it's very, very neat, pretty fancy. In keeping with the poet, like Yates.